Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Wanted to do another standard event video, and I wanted to kind of uh, rebuild the Azorius Soldiers deck. It seems like just a lot of fun. It, it's been a while since I played this deck, and I wanted to kind of rebuild it here with some of the new updates that I found in some of the other aggro decks. So first of all, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. So the deck list will be in the description, both on untapped.gg and moxfield.com. And then there will also be a link to the other playlists that I have. So if you want to see more of my videos, you can check them out there. Um, I do also want to give a shout out and a thank you here to my members. Um, you do get early access to my content, and this is a really great way to help support the channel. So thank you guys so much for becoming members. Um, it means a lot to me. Thank you. And if you want to become a member and gain early access to my content for as little as $1.99 per month, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's jump in. So Azorius Soldiers, I haven't played this deck in many months, but I was looking at you know some of the, the win rates of some of the decks in best of one standard, and I did see that Soldiers was kind of somewhere in the mix. I didn't look at the deck list, so I kind of wanted to sort of build it from scratch, but um, Basically, I wanted to get sort of a lower to the, to the ground uh, land count, and so I went with 20 lands. Uh, this way, we still have access to 17 blue sources via the Cavern of Souls and then the uh, Pain Lands and the um, other lands here. I do have one copy of Restless Anchorage just for some additional value, and just one tap land feels okay, so kind of trying it out, but... The, uh, the deck runs total 20 lands here. I've got two Biganjos and then one Natural Plains. So in case they have uh, multiple um, land destruction effects, you've only got one natural basic land to go for. But I think it's really okay. It's pretty low to the ground. It's not a very expensive deck. Um, for the general mana cost, we've got 15 one drops. We have three Yoshin Frontliners, which are kind of... You know, you, you sort of need it because you want an early soldier that is capable of putting out two damage. Um, it's not amazing, but it gets the job done. And then you have four copies of Warden of the Inner Sky and four copies of Recruitment Officer, which are kind of more of the sort of premium one-drop soldiers. You also have four copies of March of Otherworldly Light, which I've tried in both Boros Humans, uh, Mono White Humans. This card has been absolutely phenomenal, especially with the rise in... Um, slick shot show off and you know must deal with threats on turn one or two so being able to kind of go down a card and pitch a card to be able to deal with a threat earlier has really been just amazing for me so i absolutely swear by a play set of this and we're going to try it out for the two drops we've got 14 two drops four copies of copper coat vanguard to buff all of our humans um, all the soldiers in this deck are humans with the exception of, I think, the Yoshin Frontliner and the Valiant Veteran. So for the most part, they're all humans. So this is a, a very nice effect, and then giving Ward 1 to all of our humans as well is great. We have two copies of Resolute Reinforcements. I'd like the full playset, but there just isn't room, and I had to kind of shave something somewhere. So we're running two copies of Reinforcements here to help kind of get Ward in going a little bit, and then also help out with our Knight Aaron of Eos. One copy of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, since we only have four spells in the whole deck. And one copy of Denic Pious Apprentice to kind of give us some extra lifelink, lock down graveyards. Um, again, I just haven't got room for more copies of these cards. I'd love to run more, there just isn't room. Four copies of Valiant Veteran, which pumps all of our soldiers, fantastic effect. And then also 
if they kill it, you can exile it from the graveyard to put a plus one plus one counter on each of your soldiers. So really nice there. Two copies of Harbin Vanguard Aviator. This is one of your win conditions where if you have five soldiers or more in play and you can attack with them, uh, creatures that you control get plus one plus one and flying until end of turn. So absolutely fantastic as kind of a end game win con if you can just flood the board. And then two copies of Brutal Cathar, two copies of Siege Veteran, and two copies of Sky Strike Officer. So these are kind of more of our utility top end. Um, again, I'm only running two copies of each because there just isn't room for, for more. Brutal Cathar kind of just deal with sort of any larger threat. Um, again, I think two copies is the bare minimum that I'd want to run. Two copies of Siege Veteran, so this helps by making us slightly more durable against wrath effects um for the most part the cards that do it exile so that kind of sucks but at least it kind of gives you recurring pump to give plus one plus one counters on your creatures over time and then we've also got two copies of sky strike officer which is a fantastic effect that helps this deck go a little bit long draw some cards um, so whenever it attacks you create a one one colorless soldier artifact creature token it's a two three flyer for three and then you can also tap three untapped soldiers to draw a card uh, which works whether or not this thing has summoning six so it's just sort of a, a blanket effect which is great so you know this doesn't get a whole lot better in multiples and again since we need tons of room um shaving down to two we're trying it so feels good one copy of Meryl shield of argive this is kind of your sort of top end soldier bomb if there is one basically your opponents can't cast any spells or activate abilities of artifacts creatures or enchantments on your turn so sort of similar to like grand abolisher a little bit um, not quite the same but uh, it's it's a very very nice effect here um or maybe it's the same well at any rate it's it's a good effect and then it's a 3-4 for four, 4, and whenever it attacks, you create X-1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of soldiers you control. So this spirals out of control really quick. And then we have four copies of Night Errant of Eos. This card is so good that, like, any aggressive white deck, you basically have to run this card, whether you want to or not. It's just so fantastic. Convoke, go and find whatever you need. Um, yeah, that's the deck. So let's jump in to a standard event. I've only played a couple games of this thing on ladder on my tablet and um, yeah it's it's been doing decently well um, I don't have that many games under my belt so we'll have to see but it's been a lot of fun and I really do miss this style of deck okay opening hand looks good I think with 20 land there should be enough to kind of get us going we only have 11 converted mana cost cards that are three or greater and so <clears throat> it's a little bit less than you might expect in your average like mono white humans deck or something like that um partially to kind of deal with that low land count so Okay, we might want to just get rid of that with March. I um, wonder if we can go, if it's worth going down a card to deal with the aggression. I think it probably is, in all honesty. So I think we, we probably want to keep maybe our Knight Errant to refill. Although, are we going to have time? We might not have time. Hmm. I mean, the 4-4s four are super good, though, if we can manage to stick it. So maybe we get rid of our Harbin here. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna try that. I don't know if it's right, but I think that I want to slow down their aggression here. And just kind of buy us more time. And 
And then whether we lead out with Vanguard or Veteran, I don't think it makes a huge difference. Veteran is a little bit better if they kill it, because then we can replay it later. So I guess we'll do that. Now, whether we should have pitched the Harbin there or the Knight Errant, I'm not sure. I'd like to go big if we can with Knight Errant and try to recoup some of that card disadvantage. So, I feel like we, you know, we'll probably have enough time here, so it'll probably work out. And now we should be able to get it next turn, whether they, unless they kill both our creatures. Notably, they do have Slick Shot Show Off, so they're going to have decently big turn next turn. But at least they have to pay for it, so that's always good. I think we want to hold the Aganjo if we can. I don't think it's... I mean, we could try to push for three here, but I think if we just hold might be a little bit better. Because well, we might need this against the show-off. Okay, now... I mean, we could play out Warden. Is that better than holding a Ganjo? I guess since we have Brutal Cathar, we can, like, potentially slow them down a little bit. And having five mana is also good. So I'm just going to play this out. Just kind of get this going. Now we can also use Recruitment Officer if we need to. Okay, so that was a nice pickup. Um, here I think we just want to Brutal Cathar, get the show off off the board. If they have to waste burn on it, that's fine. I think we just flood the board here. Um, we could start buffing up our warden. I don't know that we care. I think we just want to push damage here. Yeah, because I think I'm happy trading with anything here, so I think we just push. We'll make our copper coat a little harder to deal with. And yeah, now just use kind of the, the momentum to get it done. And again, if they kill Brutal Cathar here, we're okay. Unfortunately, did not draw the land there. So I think, yeah, we probably just wait for Brukathar to flip. I guess if we full on shove and they block here, we're pushing seven, nine, 11. Okay, so yeah, they're, they have force blocks on the Knight Errant. So that's actually pretty good for us. As long as we buff the right, I guess, Let's see, if, could they block Brutal Cathar? I don't think so. Because we've got 4, 9, 11. Yeah, they're just dead. So now they have to block Knight or, or just die. And then I think we let this flip for Brutal Cathar. Just so they can't, I guess, get back another Slick Shot. But I don't think they can kill us here. I'm trying to think what they'd have to have. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, so they had the monster's rage. It wasn't quite enough to get there. Wanna know? Okay, opening hand looks good. Okay, let's just lead out here. So the question here is, do we go for Valiant Veteran or Officer plus Hold Up March? We're at 15, so I think we can probably just play out the Veteran. Plus this gets us closer to Knight Errant. And if they kill this, we can bring it back later. Okay. Very good draw here from our opponent, so yeah. Eh, it's now it's getting a bit dicier. This is a little tough. Um, we could just play officer and hold up March. They, I'm hoping they're kind of close to out of gas, but if they're not, it's. This is probably the safest play, Officer plus March. But I think we kind of need to get something going here. Let's see, if they have, like, Monstrous Rage, it's so bad for us. Yeah, I think we have to play a little defensive here, unfortunately. Because, like, we just lose to Monstrous Rage if they've got it otherwise. Okay, that's a good one, too. So now we can get rid of the show off and then chump, which is still really bad, but we don't quite die. Otherwise, I guess if we get rid of one of the swift spears and also chump, then we take six, go to one. We keep all of our cards in hand. That seems worse though. I think we gotta get rid of the night air in here. We're just not gonna have time for it, unfortunately. Yeah, so maybe we should have played the more conservative play earlier on. I feel like that could have been like a game losing, just because they had like, they were able to strain the ancestral angers. So now we have to chump. And then if they draw anything but land, we're pretty much just dead here. Um, guess we have to go Sky Strike Officer to try to. Eh, it's about the same actually. Let's go for. Let's go for Veteran here. It's it's super bad either way. Maybe Officer would have been slightly better, I suppose, if they draw like Phoenix Chick. But yeah, now we're just dead. So yeah, I guess our losing play was paying val was playing a Valiant Veteran on two instead of um, holding up uh, March. That's how good March is in these games. One and one.
And I think maybe you have to play a little bit more defensive also, just because there's really no lifelink in this deck. I'm, you've got like one copy of Denik, but that's it. You don't have any of like the Lunark veterans. You don't have um, any of the intrepid adversaries. So it's it's quite a bit more punishing that way. Um, I think I'm going to play at the Officer here. I'll probably just go into Warden next turn, but I think I'll start with the Officer just in case I want to change it up. I guess this was a possibility. Maybe it would have been better to have Warden out, but I guess having Officer is nice. March is a great top deck for us. giving up the Aganjo, but I think we kind of have to here. And I think we just march, get our Deep Cavern Bat back. That's a good one. So now we can get rid of the Servant of the Stinger and then just push, or I guess get our Warden going. Question is, do we want to get Thalia out there? I kind of like Thalia, sort of cuts down their mana a little bit. Problem is, Servant can go and find them whenever they need if we don't deal with it. Not sure on this one. I think I'll Brutal Cathar here. That's a good one. Yeah, Servant of the Stinger is going to be trouble. Um, hmm. Guess if they have like another card they can use, Servant can activate next turn. I think I want to get Thalia going here just to kind of cut down their mana a little bit. 
This also kind of makes their zombie less good. Now I think we want copper coat here, just to add another layer of ward. Yeah, unfortunately we can't really get it on the ground yet. So yeah, looking back, I guess maybe we should have kept our march for potential like bigger threats like Shieldred or Henrika. And then just kind of dealt with the um, the bat. Might have been better. Now we can try to go search for our other Brukathar or like an answer here. We could also double spell. That doesn't really hold back Shieldred here, unfortunately. So I think I'm just gonna... Oh, this is tough. We kind of need to... We kind of need a Hail Mary at this point here. We're definitely falling behind. I think maybe we just go for the officer play. So yeah, we're pretty much, oof. it's not looking good for our heroes, that's for sure. Oh, and now we can activate, almost missed the trigger there. Yeah, I think a potential problem with this deck is we have trouble with big threats like Henrika and Shieldred um, or these Urborg Scavengers. So I think we might just be dead. Um, don't really have like life gain to kind of get back into it, which is a real problem. Which the Mono White Humans deck, you know, the having the Lunark Veteran is so good, especially against Mono Red. So yeah, I think we're just gonna be dead in the air here, unfortunately. Children's gonna do it. Whew, one and two. Not not a great start. This could be a very short run. Okay, opening hand looks good.
All right, let's lead out here with probably Frontliner, just because we're planning to get to Warden next turn, and they probably have, like, Play With Fire, so we want to make sure that we don't lose too good of a creature here. Okay, there's the show off. That's a good one. It's going to be a lot of damage coming in. And it looks like they're holding Lauren's escape, but I think we've still got a test for it. Yeah, they almost certainly have Lauren's escape here. I think, though, if we don't try to get him to use it, we just lose the game. Yep, there's the Lauren's escape. Guess now we try to go for a blocker if they don't kill us next turn. March is gonna be good if we can survive. Do they have another piece of burn? Okay, can stabilize at one. That'll work. And I think we, we don't play around here. We definitely just march it right now. I guess we could march getting rid of like um, Knight Errant. Actually, then we can play Vanguards. That's pretty good. So we want to give them the least number of draws possible here. Also, there's a decent argument here for making this thing flying in Vigilance in case they draw into another um, one of their flyers. So, yeah, I think we, we kill them over two turns anyways. So I think I'm actually going to go for that play. Ah, <laughs> Kumano faces Kakazan on top. Oh, so unfortunate. Okay, yeah, so March is pretty good. I think, you know, that much definitely is obvious. Unfortunately, we did go one and three, so this deck probably does not have what it takes to go the distance. But I had fun playing it, and I hope you guys had fun watching. So we will see you here in the next one. Good old 50, uh, 50 gems for our efforts. So yeah, hopping back into the deck real quick, just so you guys have a look. Um, I think some of the major issues here is there's not enough life gain. Like we have one copy of Denic. What you could do is you could up the Denic count. Um, you probably could also run some number of Lunark Veteran, but kind of the farther you go that direction, the more it's sort of like, well, why are we even playing soldiers as, as a subtype? And then I think it kind of comes back to, you know, Siege Veteran being pretty bad against um, Sunfall. And 
you know, also not being very useful against temporary lockdown when it hits your other creatures. It's just another reason why soldiers are just not that great right now. So I think it was fun, but uh, mono white humans is probably just better. All right. Take care, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.